Hey, what's up, guys? It is Tom and Scott from Back His Dad, and we have a special guest with us today. It is our buddy Chase uh, from Chasing Horizons on YouTube. So we'll uh, talk hey, a little bit up, about. Hey, what's up, Horizon Chasers? <laughs> it's Chase yeah, here. Go. For real, though, he does good ASMR. <laughs> Yeah, man. At least and that's really, what I do the most. Yeah, man. And we're going to, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about his channel at the end and let you guys know where you can find out more of Chase's content. But the reason that we're coming to you guys today is because you've probably seen on the channel, you know, the past week or so, we've been putting out some content about Wayfinder because we've been kind of excited to jump into this game, right? For a lot of different reasons. The drop in, you know, jump in, jump out style. It has some MMO elements that kind of spoke to us some really cool build craft it looks like that you're going to be able to do and i think as fans of warframe as well like a little bit more of a casual warframe style that we were kind of excited for and so we were all three going to jump in and play but of course tuesday rolled around which was august 15th the original date that early access was going to launch but it got pushed back to thursday so they had some issues yeah. mm -hmm. so thursday rolled around and man it's just been kind of a disaster ever, yeah. si ever since. In, in these cases, I always feel so bad for the guys <laughs> and girls that took out days off from work mm -hmm. to play a game. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. seeing that servers down light up your screen is one of the, <sighs> like, the most depleting, demoralizing <laughs> things you can and see. So, man, we'll get, I, I know. we'll get to that if that's a wise decision or not. I don't know, yeah. but... Basically, the, the story is so far is that none of us has, has been able to play. Uh, we have some other buddies, too, who are maybe wanting to jump in. I don't think any of us have even had a chance to play. I mentioned earlier to these guys, I looked on my Steam page, and I have 53 minutes played of Wayfinder. But that's <laughs> obviously 53 minutes sitting in queue. So I have seven more minutes to get a Steam uh, refund, basically. So, But I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. But Honestly, I feel like Steam hours... <laughs> played in my steam library are purely like just state like stale screens mm -hmm. that's it right mm -hmm. just yeah. A, yeah afk i, get, I sit screen. down to play and then i got a kid <laughs> screaming and then i'm like well i guess this is gonna gain some hours <laughs> sitting here <laughs> yeah i have been there for a lot of big game companies releases and they've been utter crap you know i'm looking at sure. blizzard and pretty well, much any expansion especially. yeah, yeah. And even with single player games and, and other mm. co-op games, like I remember the Avengers game was a mm. mess. Like, so here's the way I'm looking at it. I'm like, Hey, this is early access. There's going to be hiccups server servers on launches always have problems. So for mm. me, I just anticipate it now. And, and it's not surprising to mm. me. I think if we're looking at it as a high possibility here of what happened, I think the game got more traction than they thought. And I think they got hit with a lot of players trying to get in. And uh, I just think they probably didn't compensate too well hmm. for that influx. So that's possibly one issue. But I mean, either way, in a few days, the game will be up and running. Yeah, sorry, it, it wasn't here as it should have been. But let's move on. We're going to play anyway. So we might mm -hmm. as well stop complaining about it. Yeah, well, they've actually come out and they've put out some statements, both from Airship yeah. Syndicate and Digital Extremes. And basically, they just said, hey, we messed up, right? They're Sorry, owning yeah. it. They're giving, you That's know. Good. Yeah, it, it is. You know, they're not making excuses for what's happened. I think basically mm -hmm. they're echoing your sentiment, Scott, that, hey, we just didn't we didn't account for the amount of players that, yeah. which is obviously, an, it's a blessing and a curse. Obviously, you want people to be into your game. That's mm -hmm. the whole point of why they're making the game. But... You know, I don't know what the metrics they were looking at or, yeah. you know, that that would be a fascinating thing to know. Like, mm. well, what were they expecting and then how many did they yeah. get? I just think from my, from our perspective as putting out content about the game and then following the content from other creators and what was on YouTube. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of content out there about mm. Wayfinder. It's not a beta. Mm -hmm. It's not a full launch, mm -hmm. right? It's somewhere in the middle. Do you kind of give them a pass on like, hey, w you know, we're figuring it out or what level of accountability is appropriate for this kind of my, situation? My first thought to that is it depends. And I think that depends on the size of the developer 
you know, the scope of the game, I think, and in this being that it's an MMO, you know, the scope of the game is obviously huge. They have, they had mm. ambitious plans for this giant launch. And I think, you know, the, the games that they currently have under their belt, you know, um, it doesn't show that level of scope, you know, from what I can tell, the least the developer side. So I don't think they were well, they may not have been well equipped to see this level of success, you know, because I know a lot mm. of streamers were talking about it. You know, it was just huge. And yeah. it seemed yeah. like there was people doling out hundreds of dollars from what I could tell. They had like a pack that was one hundred and fifty dollars and I didn't even notice that. Wow. So people yeah, are they spending. Had, they had a, had a nice payout here they, recently. Yeah. So they're spending serious money and I'm sure they're putting a lot <laughs> of effort into it. And I just mm -hmm. see, you know, just just kind of scrubbing through and i know tom i sent you a screenshot of some of the reviews and you know you can't yeah, base yeah. everything you can't base everything off the reviews because people just and i call this the perpetual whiner syndrome but i'm not saying that that's <laughs> all but really but really there yeah. are a core group of people who just like to whine about like the game they look and for the negative they look yeah. straight for the negative you know i think yeah. there's one comment that said like oh it's a great login simulator i love that and i'm like okay <laughs> that's funny why are you staring at the freaking <laughs> login funny. screen all day i was like how many other games grass, do... bro yeah i was like Q how many Q other games are... 3, yeah. yeah we have so many other games to play right now and then yet here we are airship is kind of a smaller studio right mm -hmm. they're not a triple a mm -hmm. but they've kind of partnered with the triple a of course at least in my mind I know Digital Extremes probably likes to think of themselves as a indie, still like a small studio, but yeah. Warframe is an absolute massive game, right? Yep. And so I yeah. think Airship, you know, maybe maybe they did foresee some of this stuff a little bit, and so they're like, hey, we're gonna need some help from someone who manages a game of this size. So they brought in help from Digital Extremes, right? Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the hundred and fifty dollar pack, which if you look at Warframe, they regularly have $150 packs when they unvault Warframes or they have Prime Warframes that will come back for purchase. And so it's, it's I don't want to say it's super aggressive, but this is a lot of money. It's a big ask, right? Now, the game is free to play, of course, in Warframe. And it seems like, it seems like Wayfinder is kind of modeling their whole uh, monetization similar to what Warframe is doing. So... The question that I'm kind of roundabout getting to is people have put down real money to play this early access, right? Mm -hmm. And some people, a lot of money, you know, not us because we, we uh, have kids we have to feed and, and uh, you know, electric bikes we have to buy. But other people put down a lot <laughs> nice. of money for this, nice. right? So, Scott, do they? I mean, I know you seemed like you're, I don't want to say you were lenient, but you were saying like, hey this happens in new launches do yeah. you have sympathy for these people like hey we maybe we took off work maybe we put yeah. a lot of money down in expectation to be able to play this game but yeah I, I think really for something happening. I think for something like the founder pack that's a high price for an early access yeah. game they'll, they'll be compensated for something and yeah in, they've mentioned compensation like a, already like faith yeah. gesture chase do you have any issue with it or where are you kind of personally now after all this has happened are you like hey I need a refund or you will just like, you know what? This game at the core still seems like it's going to be really fun. We just got to ride this out. Basically. I can, yeah. I can tell you this much. I've spent a lot of time watching YouTube channel, uh, YouTube, uh, streams of it <laughs> and the mm. frustrations from those, um, kind of mm. living through other people's experiences. Cause obviously I can't experience it just yet. I, you know, it's a login simulator at this point. Um, but no, I, I'm not in it to, to refund. Absolutely not. Like it's not something I was even thinking and considering. Um, I didn't pay the $150, you know, pre-order yeah. pack, yeah. but so I'm sure those, you know, those people are, are right. thinking, oh, wow, what did I do? But, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's yeah. truthfully, you know, I, I don't think so. I don't think I'd be ever thinking about it that way. So if people are dropping that much cash on an early <laughs> access pre-order here, I think they know that uh, these aren't the people I, I think are complaining on something like Steam. Mm -hmm. They know what to expect and... We're just gonna ride it out and i think the game's at its core like you said tom it's gonna be fun so yeah let's I get rid so. of the negativity let's mm -hmm. just 
let's be a little happy. Let's be optimistic and say, hey, in a few days, whenever we'll play this game and we'll forget about this. So mm-hmm. come yeah, on. I, I'm on board. I, I want to play the game. It looks cool. Yeah. It looks fun. It hasn't deterred me. It's like, I still mm-hmm. want to play it. Like, yeah, it sucks, but whatever. You know, I, I think people are right to be upset, though. Yeah. I don't mm-hmm. want to I don't want to give them a pass for this. Yeah. You know, I, I think there needs to be some accountability and I still think there's kind of a stigma with early access games for me, you know, and I don't think this helps it. You know, you I prefer games that fully launch and mm-hmm. so maybe this is my fault. I need to vote with my dollar instead of, mm-hmm. you know, complaining about it necessarily. But at, to your point earlier, Scott, I mean, w- should we expect anything different? You know, we've been going through this for yeah. years as MMO players kind of a yeah. thing. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's it's weird. It's like I, I see your sentiment, but I just think like this is the reality we live in with it. Yeah. This is just what to expect. And whether like obviously, regardless of how mad it may it makes us, people are still spending the money. They're still spending the time. Mm-hmm. Like this this obviously doesn't deter gamers because these companies are still doing it. Mm-hmm. So you might as well just expect it and and not be let down and then just go with it when it comes up finally. I think a good I think a good parallel to this is the companies that start Kickstarters and you go, why did they start a Kickstarter? They just had a successful product launched, you know, previously. And why do they need to run another Kickstarter? And it's like, well, no, because people buy into Kickstarters and they can fund that R&D. And, you know, even if the product in itself may not be a giant success, there's a lot of parallels there to them launching it this way, you know, and I and, yeah. and then there's the other side where people get frustrated and as quickly and as cyclical as games are today and gamers are today, it can actually burn out a potentially fantastic product, you know? Mm, And I think that's where as quick as it came in, it's going to burn out quick so that, you know, these developers have to be careful with this sort of stuff. You know, they launch it and it fails because of all these bugs, Mm -hmm. you know, or all these issues. You don't usually get, a second chance at a first impression so yep. it, it's gone right the yep. steam reviews are there yeah. and, and you know if, if people want refunds I, I think that it's fair right mm-hmm. and i think they should even put it past the hour mark on steam and if people someone really wants a refund i think that's totally fair but mm-hmm. you know you don't have to shred the company i mean you you get your refund you go like i think scott mentioned this as well the developers haven't really done anything wrong. The people who built worked on the game, the, the game still seems good, mm-hmm. you know. So I think it's unfair to totally rip the game just because of the server issues. Not you know not about the gameplay itself, mm-hmm. you know. Until we get a chance to critique that. So mm-hmm. I don't know. An interesting discussion. We're all going to wait patiently. All I can say is. Guild Wars 2 expansion drops on Tuesday, so maybe this is good. I'll just go play that. Like you guys said, yep. there's a lot of good games on there. But yep. uh, before we get out of here, Chase, let's just uh, shine the spotlight on you a little bit. Yep. So yeah. we play games a lot, but you also have your own YouTube channel. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your channel and what you do there? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I started this channel, you know, Chasing Horizons, just as a kind of a, a I call it my touch grass moment. And uh, I needed to get outdoors. Nice. I, re- I really, really did. I needed to get outdoors more. And I forced myself to just start unboxing products that were outdoorsy products. And I, you know, played a lot. I play a lot of games. I sit in front of a computer all day. I'm a, you know, a designer, on, you know, and I just was like, I need to do products that are more outdoorsy. And I find that there's a lot of products out there that are techie and also really unique and i've got you know e-bikes and lounge chairs and out you know and it's just been a lot of fun you know and i do it all in in uh, stories related uh story ig story um <clears throat> youtube shorts and tiktoks so it keeps it simple for me and it's just a lot of fun doing these product reviews and product unboxings so that's really the kind of the the, sh- the long of the mm-hmm. short of it i guess would be the word but um yeah just having fun and yeah really enjoying trying out new touch grass touch grass products if you will <laughs> so that's pretty much it that's the story <laughs> no that's so, awesome man and man, i love yeah. the channel i Thank uh you. i need to get outdoors more too so but it is cool the crossover from you know with the tech side and the outdoor yeah. side it's a yeah. very cool in the cool sounds stuff. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yeah and Dude, i was going unbox I, I listen to this guy's dreamy voice every saturday <laughs> That's yeah, the right. that's the morning Jesus. the morning coffee voice. It so goes no with the coffee, and I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> ah, oh, get man. that get that into my veins. <laughs> <laughs>